welcome back. The, ooh, scary vibes, hey. I'm kind of being blinded by that light. I probably shouldn't look in it. Ooh, I'm going to read some scary stories that I found on Reddit. I am gonna like, I'm totally gonna mess all of this up. I can already tell. Okay, I'm gonna read a long one. Okay, this one's like really long, so bear with me. This one is called, A Few Scary Things That Have Happened To Me. I'm a 21 year old female at the time of writing this. It's 3.27 a.m. on a Saturday, July 21st, 2018. My brother and sister, the best friend in the next event, wanted me to go to McDonald's because they were hungry. Outside, a torrential thunderstorm was in the full swing with a tornado warning underway. Okay, no thanks. Tornadoes are literally the most terrifying thing to me. I wanted someone to come with me, but neither one of them wanted to leave the house. So I grabbed my bag, wallet, keys, and umbrella, and headed outside. On the side porch, I tried to get my dog to come along, but he'd rolled over in the box he claimed and went back to sleep. That moment, my sister's cat ran onto the porch, so I just grabbed him and went to the car. I would probably do the same thing. I literally did that once. I took my dad's dog with me when I thought there was gonna be a tornado and literally drove to my uncle's house where my dad was house sitting. Now, I live 15 minutes away from town, out in the country full of woods, not even two minutes away from a national park and a separate state park, both in opposite directions of my house. There are no street lights lining the road in town, so I'm sure you see why I was apprehensive to be going out alone. Anyway, so I got into my car and headed into town with no incident save for the sky lighting up with a flash of lightning five or six times and having to avoid fallen tree limbs. Probably shouldn't be going outside. <laughs> I had a cat in my lap and he was purring. So I wasn't too worried. Even when I got into thick patches of fog at the bottom of the hills, I drove on. We went to the gas station to refuel my car and then went to the drive up. After ordering and paying, the cashier noticed Simba and treated him with a nugget saying, oh, a little kitty cat. Hold on, I always give puppies I see a nugget, so I'll give him one too. Simba doesn't eat human food, he just sniffs it. And if it has dairy on it, he might lick it, but unless it's a bowl of milk, he won't touch it. I didn't want to hurt the lady's feelings, so I gave the okay. The cat got his nugget and we drove off. On the way back, the cat lay down in the back seat. I wasn't too worried about this until we got back to the highway. There was even thicker patches of fog, though the rain had let up. I was nervous because the fog was like pea soup. Here's where the scary part comes in. As I was driving, not quite up to the entrance of the state park yet, I see something just standing, staring at the road from the side in the trees. My stomach dropped. I didn't know what it was, but I couldn't make out a full face. I just knew it was staring. I sped up and made sure I was going a five over the speed limit out of fear. I wanted to get to the driveway in case anything was following me. We have a mountain cur, my brother's dog, who doesn't like anyone but the family. He's very overprotective and is the type of dog that would charge down a bear. If whatever it was happened to be a threat, he'd take it on. Luckily, I made it home without incident, but that seriously freaked me out. This next one happened around the same time when I was 16, living with my mother in Florida. My best friend, 18 at the time, had come down to visit me during the summer. It was muggy and humid. At the time, we lived in government housing, but that summer, we found that mold had grown in the walls and had just been painted over before we moved in. My little sister, my oldest little brother, and I all started showing signs of illness caused by this, respiratory problems, vomiting, the like. My best friend is very sensitive to things, and during this time, she started listening to what was around us. She heard voices saying, get out, leave, and someone call her name. One night, during a playing session of Smash Bros Brawl, she started hearing it again. We were in my little sister's room because hers was the only room with air conditioner. The house didn't have central cooling or heating system. And I had no idea how she slept through this. My friend opens herself up again, listening closely, and I guess she opened up too far or something, but the next thing I know, I get this feeling that something's wrong, very wrong. She looked at me, her eyes crazed, and she just started laughing, but it wasn't her laughing. It was something else, like something was controlling her and making her laugh. No thanks. I backed away in fear, but that just made whatever it was laugh louder. Yeah, I'm not gonna comment on that. This went on for a minute at least. When it was over, I asked her what had just happened, but she had no recollection of the time that had just passed or even what I was talking about. Ew. 
I recently asked her about it and she says that she remembers feeling like whatever it was didn't want to hurt us and that's why she let it in. She felt that it was just playful. All I know is that it was scary and I made her promise me she'd never do it again. <laughs> yeah, I would probably not want to hang out with her ever again. This is the final one I'm going to tell. My best friend and I were having a sleepover at my grandparents' house where I lived before moving in with my mother at the age of 13. My grandfather is a preacher, retired now, but anyway. A movie with a Ouija board, oh god. Had recently come out and a friend had introduced me to the concept, even going so far as to make one in class. Naturally, I, being the dumb sixth grader I was, brought this idea up to her when she stayed the night about a week later. We made one out of cardboard along with a planchette. Turned out the lights in my room. I don't like this. I usually left the closet light on because I was and still am afraid of dark. Same. And we began to play the dumb thing, not even knowing the rules. Good job. Planchette started to move, spelling out random stuff, going to yes when we asked it if there was something there, but looking back on it, I feel like it was just our nerves and our fingertips pushing it. However, that doesn't explain what happened after that. My blinds and curtains were pulled back, revealing the backyard, and as soon as the planchette moved to yes, we looked at each other and I saw something out of the corner of my eye. I removed my hands from the planchette. Yes, dumb, I know, but I was a stupid and reckless 11 year old. I was never that dumb and reckless. And looked out the window. There was a black dog. It's back to us, but I could have sworn I saw red glowing eyes. Anyway, the feeling I got with it was a warning of some kind, as if it was telling us stop. You don't know what you're meddling with. We freaked out and threw the cardboard makeshift Ouija board into my closet. I feel like the black dog saved us that night and had been protecting us ever since. You see, she and I, a magnet for weird. Yeah, not a fan of that. Mm -mm. No, not at all. Should I read one more? I should probably read one more just because to keep it interesting, you know? I feel like I don't want to read these. <laughs> this one is called, I saw her as clearly as I saw you. Let me start off by saying this account is 100% true and none of these events have been embellished. So on to my story. My cousin, aunt, and I visit a very popular haunted location one summer. Beautiful building and a lot of history at the location as well. I had put it on my must-see list since I had just moved to the state. What state? We walk in and my cousin and I look like we could jump out of our skin from excitement. There is a guide that states that a haunted tour will be starting soon and where to line up for it. I would be in that line. I turn to my aunt who is looking around quickly. She gets close to us and quietly says, we are going exploring. Tours have nothing good on them anyways. I love your aunt. With the most childlike mischievous grin, she glides up the stairs and tells us to follow her. I don't tell them about the shiver up my spine as we darted towards the stairs. We are running down hallways and recognizing areas of alleged haunts. Nothing happens, but I keep feeling like we are being watched. Our investigating comes to an end and we are rushing down a flight of stairs back to the lobby when we hear a quick shh from the upper landing. Hey! <sighs> Mori was just freaking out, I'm sorry. She's been known to have seizures in the past and freaked me out so now my heart is racing and I thought she was just having one but she was playing with a piece of fuzz on the ground. God, <laughs> these stories didn't scare me but God that sure did. <laughs> Where was I? Oh God, I'm like shaking, my heart is racing. It is a maid whose stern face and hard eyes have an authoritative air. I think to myself, shoot, we've been caught. Her glare makes me feel like a school child caught doing something bad. My aunt and cousin, seeming to not feel this woman's harsh glare, managed a sorry and a nice costume through stifled laughter and we leave. Fast forward many years later at my cousin's engagement party. I'm sitting with my aunt and some of her coworkers. My cousin has chosen, of all places, a haunted bed and breakfast for her engagement brunch. I feel like I would do that. We are talking about how spooky this bed and breakfast feels and my aunt states casually, this place is weird, but not as weird as that time we saw the ghost of that maid. I choke on my mimosa. When was this? Thinking my aunt and cousin had had some experience without me. My aunt's face loses all color when she realizes I don't know what she's talking about. Oh, I guess I didn't tell you. My coworker took the tour. 
there is a maid that shushes rowdy guests and children on the stairs. I was not expecting that. Oh my God, that is so weird. They talk about her on the tour. She then pulls out her phone and after a few frantic taps, she shows me the screen. That stern face and those harsh eyes that I saw that summer afternoon look back at me in an old portrait style picture. All I can manage to say is, I saw her as clearly as I see you. That was a great one to end it on because I was not expecting that. Well, I hope you enjoyed these scary stories. Um, I will be uploading another video next week and I'm going to try to do every Tuesday and then what day does Halloween fall on? I don't know. A Thursday. So that week I'll probably upload two. So instead of uploading a vlog and a mini series video, I'm going to upload two video, two mini series videos that week, one on Tuesday and one on Halloween. So you get a little extra dose of spooky for you. And if you want me to read your scary stories, I will be linking my Instagram down below and you can go ahead and follow me there and message me your scary stories and I will read them here for everyone's enjoyment and to scare me because what else are we here for? <laughs> okay, well, I'll see you next week with some more scary stories.